But inflation figures out today, and I'm joined by National Senator Matt Canavan, the former Resources Minister. Matt, always great to see you. Now, these inflation figures today are good news, uh, the headline at least. It was for last month, only one month this time, um, and the good news is that it fell more than expected from 7.4% to 68 and the Prime Minister, of course, was pleased, as you heard, here he is. The figures uh, today on on inflation uh, are promising. We wouldn't put Order. it more than that. We know that people are doing it are doing it tough, but inflation is heading in the right direction. But Matt Canavan, have a look at what sectors had the worst rises, and one thing really stands out: the highest inflation was with mm. the very item where the government has the biggest role: electricity. Our electricity went up. 17.2% inflation. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me that a lot of this is government-driven, uh, uh, Andrew. And I just want to say up front too, though, I don't think 6.8% inflation is good news. It, it shows the demoral demoralising uh, effect of low expectations. I mean, to think that a few years ago we would think that people going backwards, and that's what happens, people go backwards 6.8% uh, in their real wealth and their real wages... Uh, is something to be acceptable or welcome uh, is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, there is no way we should have inflation at these levels, and a lot of it's government-driven. As you say, uh, governments have adopted net-zero policies that have restricted our energy supplies and made artificial man-made shortages of energy, which has led to these price increases uh, of 17% for their, their for electricity. But when you look, and you look further down to Andrew, those things that use electricity are also clearly feeling the pinch uh, so building products are very energy intensive to build, bricks and other things, concrete, they've gone up uh, by 13%. Uh, bread and milk have gone up by 12 and 14% uh, respectively. The, the things that require electricity to be made are all going up. And so for, if people have got to pay 12% more for their daily bread, I don't think that's something the Prime Minister should be welcoming in the Parliament. Uh, I, I think he seems completely out of touch because all we're debating this week is ways we can put more taxes, more carbon taxes on these things and push that inflation figure and your cost of living higher. Where is the plan from this government to actually help bring inflation down? Yeah, you sent me a really interesting graphic, uh, Matt, of, of how inflation really took off since, we, uh, since governments adopted uh, net zero policies. And it's quite extraordinary. Just uh, bang, off they went. Now, I, I know there are other factors there too, but uh, absolutely certainly the hit to energy did not help at all. But here's the concern, Matt. Energy prices seem even more likely to go up after the deal yesterday between the Labor Party, the Labor government, the Albanese government and the Greens to hit coal and gas companies even harder. It was a Greens demand with emissions targets. So now we've got major... Coal companies like Whitehaven, New Hope, Bowen, Peabody, they're warning that this is a carbon tax by stealth. It's going to uh, drive up energy prices, going to destroy jobs and kill foreign investment. Now, Matt, you've always got to allow, of course, for people talking up their own book. Of course, they don't want uh, to pay extra taxes. But how much truth do you think there is in their claim? Well, I disagree with some of these companies to one degree that I don't think it's a carbon tax by stealth. I mean, this carbon tax is about as... Uh, disguised as uh, Lydia Thorpe at a, a gay Mardi Gras par parade. Uh, uh, it's out there and open. Uh, these companies and uh, a couple of hundred other Australian companies will have to pay an extra tax from this new proposal. Uh, the, because of the Greens deal that the Labor Party has done this week, uh, they're effectively bringing forward net zero. When, when I mentioned net zero before and our adoption of net zero, the idea was we would adopt it by 2050, but we'd take steps uh, you know, incrementally to get there. The Greens deal... Uh, that's been announced this week, the sellout that Labor has done of people's of workers' interests is to bring forward that net zero date to today for new coal and gas investments. So if you're a new coal and gas investment going forward, you'll have to net off all of those emissions. You'll have to have net zero now. You won't have to have net zero in Russia. You won't have to have net zero in China. You won't even have to have net zero in the US or Europe, but you'll have to have it here in Australia. And what that will mean for us is we won't get the investment in coal or gas and we'll have even worse energy shortages than we have today. And, of course, a shortage of energy means your power bills will go up even more. Absolutely. I can't believe what has been done to this country, Matt. I'm glad I'm at the end of my working life because uh, I won't have to pay <laughs> the consequences like the poor younger people like you will have to in the rest of their lives. Um, 
Now, Matt, I don't know whether you were in the uh, Senate when this happened, but seriously, Lydia Thorpe, who used to be a Green Senator, now she's on her own. She's a real race baiter. I can't think of anyone that plays the race card more often and more viciously. She's the one, of course, that held a war stick and a protest in the streets of Melbourne and said, this is war, telling uh, uh, Aborigines that this is war with whites. Well, yesterday she accused Liberal Senator Holly Hughes of being a racist for interrupting her during a yet another acknowledgement to country that Lydia Thorpe was doing at what seemed to be actually the end of remarks she was making. Have a listen. I want to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the lands Is that racism? Is that racism? Can I just call out racism in this chamber right now, please? I'm making a point of order that I'm in my workplace and I don't need racists being racist to me while I'm reading my speech. Can you please make sure that I am not targeted with racism while I'm trying to do my job, please? Now, Senator uh, Holly Hughes got up on her feet and said she wouldn't be called racist by that woman, uh, etc., etc. Got very offended. What she'd apparently said under her breath was something to the effect of not again, because I don't know how many welcome to uh, countries you have to sit through in Parliament. Matt Canavan, what's your take on that uh, confrontation? Well, everything's racist uh, now, uh, Andrew. Everything we do, we breathe, you're racist. You walk down the street, you're racist. Uh, uh, I was looking the other day, even if you post some, some memes on, on, on Twitter, some images can be racist as well. Uh, and so Lydia is just uh, following the, the, the well-torn path here, well-trodden path, where everybody is just calling everybody racist. And, and it has two, two effects. One, uh, it's, uh, it's very tiring, uh, obviously, uh, and, and insulting to those people called these names. Uh, but two, of course, it's just completely removing any impact of the word racist. I mean, there are still some people who know, do engage in racist conduct and that should be condemned, but it's hard now to distinguish Absolutely. that because, as I say, even breathing is racist these days. Uh, well, don't forget that there's other people saying uh, they've, they're sick and tired of uh, welcome and, uh, to countries, acknowledgement of countries, include, for instance, uh, uh, Senator Jacinta Nampajimpa Price, who's Aboriginal herself. She says, enough, enough, enough. Another racist, Matt another Canavan, racist, Andrew, so of course. Another racist, obviously. Yeah, we're all racist, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it's ridiculous. Honestly, and from the biggest race baiter in Parliament, too, let me tell you that.